Throughout his life, Brian has always craved freedom and independence. I mean, I've had two long relationships in my life, but I didn't think they were ever going to lead to marriage. And I'm very much alone. How do you get it back to 33? Because I can't do it. Everyone says I'm on helium, you know. It's unbelievable. I've tried everything, I can't fucking do it. I just can't get the fucking shoe on. Eh? Why don't things work for me? Can we go and have a drink? I'm desperate. I'm dehydrated. It's been two weeks since Brian moved into the house. Give me the fucking chips. Where are they? Sorry, I'm just going batty, you know. Christ's sake! I just break everything. I mean, why do you think this place is like shit? Because I'll fucking find everything. Oh, God, fuck it, mind it. Where are they? Nice what's in here. That's it. Nice. Sorry, you know. Oh, for fuck's sake. Give me a clue. Yeah. The chips went all over the floor when you came... Oh, fuck, where are they? I'll tear you off the fucking floor. Give me a chip, one chip, where are they? Where? You know? Tell them this, tell them this fucking thing. Why do I get fucking crazy? Because I had some, I had some food. I'm starving. I've had one meal in a fucking week. I got some chips. I lose the fucking things. So I can't fucking find them. Where the fucking hell are they? Christ! I'll buy some more, Brian. I'll yeah. Give me. Would you say it's unfair for me to say that it looks as though you've had difficulty looking after yourself here? It tells me so, yeah. Absolutely, totally into it. I've always lived in trash and chaos. I mean, I know exactly. I know what was there, and I was there, and I know. In about two days' time, this will look so neat. It's kind of libelous to suggest I don't know what, I live in chaos. It looks like I live in chaos. It looks like I don't know what the hell's going on. I know fucking exactly what I know better than anyone. I know what's going on. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly where I'm going. I know what's happening. You know. Do you think I, I can look after myself? I'm, I'm not, you know, I was born yesterday. You know, I've been on my own, basically, from the age of 18. Oh, fuck me. You'll never get the love of a hug of a lady. Don't you know? So uh, this is it, the only thing I've got to fucking cook in. Mm. to me sort of a stupid life, you know. I think it's going to be overall to work out. I mean, overall, I've had a good life. I've had a much happier life than most people. Most people have, I think. You know, most people never. I mean, this is quite most men, i.e. people, 
need li lives of quiet desperation, which I think most people do. I, I don't. I'm, I'm basically very happy. You know, I have fun life to laugh. You know. That go sailing somewhere on the sea. Three days ago, the fire brigade were called to the house. Brian went out, leaving candles burning in his bathroom, and returned to find the house filled with smoke. Well, there was no fire, there was a bit of smoke. Which could happen to anyone, you know. The social services have also begun visiting him. Well, the social worker sent me a letter last week saying he'd been, some colleagues had been in touch from London and could he come round? And I said, right, I rang and said, yeah, fine. He came, he came on Thursday and he walked in the door and he said something like, good God or something. Yeah. He seemed very worried. He said, I've never seen anything like this. He said, I'm really shocked by the state of this place and what it says about your mental health. I said, what do you mean? He said, I think you're really depressed. Said, well, that doesn't mean I'm depressed. I'm not depressed. You know. He said, I think you are. I think you need to see a doctor or you need to be in a hospital. I said, don't. You know, I really don't. I'm very self-aware. I know what state I'm in. I'm not depressed. I, I have been through depression. There's not many. I know when I'm depressed, and I know when I'm not. I know when I'm manic, and I'm neither manic nor depressed. You know. Are you happy here? Well, happier than I've been for some time, yeah. Brian has had a second fire at the house, this time causing considerable damage. Following an assessment, He's now agreed to go voluntarily to a local hospital for psychiatric treatment. Doctors have said he's currently suffering from hypermania, a less intense form of mania. It's been almost six months since we first met Brian. We've continued to keep in regular contact with him at the hospital, by phone and through visits, but filming has stopped while he's undergoing treatment. Well, I think I'm in quite a good situation, and I'll come out, and <clears throat> I've got plans. I know what I want to do. I think most people in there are in a fairly hopeless situation. They don't know what they're going to do when they come out. And some of them, they kind of want to leave. They feel they can't, because they know if they get out, they'll be far worse than they are when they're in there. They'll go home, and they'll be in a desperate, suicidal, possibly, state. And, you know, and it's, it's very sad, actually. You know, it's quite, well, moving, yeah. A week later, Brian was moved to a nearby hostel as part of a plan to assess whether he was ready to be discharged. But he found it difficult to settle there and soon returned to the hospital. He'd been back for just two days when one afternoon he suddenly left and travelled to London. He checked into this cheap hotel in Paddington. Shortly after arriving, Brian went to an off-licence and bought a bottle of vodka and one of martini. At some point, he left his room, walked down a flight of stairs, and climbed onto this roof balcony. We don't know why he went out onto the roof, but it seems he came and sat on this ledge. Two days later, his body was discovered in this courtyard below. The precise circumstances of Brian's death remain unclear. At the inquest, the coroner recorded an open verdict. <laughs>